Hi, I'm Brian Ginsberg. I'm a member of TI's Kilby Labs, and today I'm here to talk to you about terahertz waves. So to begin with, what do I mean when I say terahertz waves? And to see that, we can draw a picture of the electromagnetic spectrum as a function of frequency. At the low end of this frequency range, we have what are our regular radio systems. These are things like FM, AM, cellular radio, so radio systems. And these operate roughly between the kilohertz space and the few gigahertz. At the higher frequency side of the electromagnetic spectrum, we have visible light. And in between these two spaces, there's a few main classes of signals. These are millimeter waves, terahertz waves, and infrared. And nowadays, we use a lot of, we interact with the spectrum a lot at radio waves, a lot in visible light. We don't do a whole lot in between. So this is what I'm talking about with terahertz. And even though we don't use this at the moment, it doesn't mean it's not interesting. For instance, this regime carries a lot of the benefits of both sides. Like radio waves, it can penetrate walls, but it has wider bandwidths. And like visible light, which has very short wavelengths, you can steer this precisely, and you can get precise measurements and precise, very nice images. So we retain a lot of the benefits of both sides, but it's not used. So that begs the question of why. And the main reason is how we already interact with the electromagnetic spectrum. At the radio side of waves, we typically use electronic devices. Now, electronic devices use, built on semiconductors and radiated through an antenna, they have the typical property that at higher frequencies, the power available from an electronic device decreases. Now, on the visible light spectrum, we use photonic devices. These are things like lasers and photodiodes. In addition to, in general, being more expensive and less complex and easy to control than the electronic devices, they have the property that at lower frequencies, the power per photon or energy per photon decreases, and therefore the available power of photonic devices decreases at lower frequencies. And that means in this terahertz space, there are very few devices that can really generate signals and receive signals well. Doesn't mean that nothing exists there, it just means that the class of systems that you can build is really limited. If you were to go out and buy an existing system in terahertz space right now, it would look something like this. It would be a big box, it's about 10 to the six cubic centimeters, it would consume about a kilowatt, and it would consume about, it would cost about $100,000. So if you look at a system like this, it's big, it's bulky, it's expensive. It really limits the applications that you can go after. Now that picture is beginning to change, and the reason it's beginning to change is because of the entire evolution of the electronics industry. If we look at the driving force in electronics over the past half century, it's been the development of silicon-based circuits, and these silicon has gone from micron feature sizes to nanometer feature sizes. And along with this decrease in feature size, the speed of these processes has increased. So the speed has continued to increase. And what that means for this top picture is that the electronic devices that drive radio waves, these have, allowed, these have shifted to the right. This, as fa processes get faster, we're able to get more power at higher frequencies. And that means that we can now generate a meaningful amount of power in the millimeter wave and terahertz space and receive signals as well. So this opens up a broad new class of applications. And just as silicon-based devices have made computers much smaller, if you look at what they can do to the terahertz device, a silicon-based terahertz device is going to be orders of magnitude better than this. So we're talking about 10 centimeters cubed, about one watt, and costing about $10. So now that you have devices like this, you're really able to really access the spectrum a lot better. So what type of applications does this enable? I'm just gonna talk about a couple of them. The main application that any of us have really interacted with in the millimeter wave space is when you go to these airports, you go to airports, you go through these fancy new scanners, half of them are millimeter based scanners. And those take advantage of the fact that you can, millimeter waves will penetrate clothing as well as be able to take pretty nice images. But that's just the tip of the iceberg in imaging. If you advance this, you can start talking about imaging in the healthcare space. Terahertz waves have, have the ability to show excellent contrast between healthy skin tissue, skin tissue and cancerous skin tissue. This would enable a non-invasive way to figure out where your uh, cancer is. And unlike other medical imaging modalities, such as x-rays, which operate way high in frequency spectrum, terahertz waves have lower energy per photon and are therefore safe uh, when interacting with the body. In addition, terahertz waves have the ability to interact with different gaseous and solid chemicals. So not only can you take precise imaging, you can also be able to do remote chemical measurements of the body. 
The second area I'm going to talk about today is in safety systems. So let's say you're driving in your car. So high-end automobiles today already have very high end are going to have a, an automotive radar that allows you to track cars in front of you. Now, as these types of radar systems go from the large scale to the, the silicon-based tiny scale, you can start to think about sprinkling radars all the way around a car and going from the high end of cars to the, to the medium and low end of cars. Once the electronics become small enough, you can have a 360 degree coverage of your vehicle. So that will allow your vehicle not only to track cars in front of you, it'll allow you to track cars in lanes next to you, and probably most importantly, it will allow you to detect the pedestrian that is about to cross the intersection and allow you to stop before you hit them. This type of coverage will allow cars to really understand their environment a lot better and is the next step that will lead to autonomous vehicles. I hope I've given you some information today about terahertz waves and I'd like to thank you for your time.